add my, um, add my minute of thanks to the organizers uh, on air to everybody else's. It's, you know, they, they are so much shock and it's particularly uh, fantastic to have so many world experts to listen to. And uh, also the opportunity to talk to people that I know and people that I have just gotten to know. The course seems very interesting, and I'm looking forward to hearing his talk this afternoon. Um, so it's Friday, and it's the end, and a lot of people are leaving today. So um, this is going to be a talk with very little actual content. Um, there's going to be a lot of sort of hand waving. Um, you going to tell some jokes? I, I might. I might see if I can do that. I don't know. Um, right. I mean, I, there are sort of a, a number of questions around this topic of Expectations of modular spaces. Uh, a number of questions around this that um, I've been sort of kicking around for some time, and I think. Um, there are other people who have been kicking around other aspects of these questions, and so I'm just going to try to give some overview of, you know, what are some of what what are the questions and sort of approaches to this question of of topology and compactification for modularized spaces, and you know, there's sort of two motivations for me. Um, one of them, of course, is conjectures like the sudden conjecture, which is about the L2 cohomology or the L2 harmonic forms on these. Uh, Monopole modular spaces, but there are actually a variety of conjectures of this type that relate to um, that relate to various sorts of uh, hyperkähler spaces, hyperkähler moduli spaces, um, in which there are predictions about the uh, space of L two harmonic forms coming from physics. Um, and so, sort of from that point of view, of course, that gives you like a goal to try to understand. Um, but what's from a from a different perspective, from the perspective of topology. This gives you the question of um, a sort of a, a, a place to test out the question of what should Hodge theory look like in the setting of non compact manifolds and non compact Riemannian manifolds because, you know, um, that's quite an interesting question. And by looking at examples, for instance, in the case of local symmetric spaces or in the case of, um, of manifolds with conical singularities, this has led to some very interesting and rich topological theory. And for that reason, it's you know, it's, it's reasonable to conjecture that looking at natural metrics on other non-compact spaces may lead to, to new interesting ideas in topology. So there's sort of a, a, I guess, motivation from both sides of this. Okay, so the, the general question that I want to approach is, um, can we articulate um, an L2 Hodge theorem okay sorry I should say given um, a complete non a complete non compact Riemannian manifold MG can we articulate an L2 Hodge theorem of the form that the L2 harmonic forms on M with respect to this metric are isomorphic to, and I'm just going to sort of say some sort of cohomology on some sort of cohomology. So this is. Of topologically defined um, cohomology, and this is some compactification right, so and uh, possibly non singular compactification. So that's the general question that we want to approach. And uh, let's just look at some examples. So these are very, these are 
describe your learning examples. They're not very challenging. You probably know them all already, but um, we can still get some, uh, some sense of, of the sorts of questions that come on by looking at these. Okay, so, so for instance, um, let's look at the situation where sigma is a, uh, is a Riemann surface. And P is an element of sigma, just any point on that surface. Okay. And what we can do is we can look at the puncture surface, and near that puncture, we can endow the surface with a variety of types of metric. Right? And so um, one thing that we could do is a cylindrical type metric. So but sigma is compact, right? Sigma needs to point. Sigma is supposed to be both compact. Sigma is a compact. Yeah. Right. So, Sorry. Yeah. So, um, so here's our puncture. Of course, around the puncture, there's an S1. And what I've done is I've just near that puncture, I've endowed it with at least an asymptotically cylindrical metric, or what's sometimes called a D metric. Right? So this is something that looks like dr squared plus ds s1 over dx. Right? So that's the metric there. And so this is quite well known um, that in that case, if you look at the harmonic forms, the L2 harmonic forms on sigma um, minus p with respect to this metric, this is equal to the image. Okay. Okay. So let's see. What can we do? Well, how we can compactify it. And, I'm sort of going to choose my compactifications in various ways. But what I'm going to say is that the sort of the natural geometric compactification here is the one that you get by just adding on a copy here sort of at infinity, right? So that's something, um, so as when Les Saper was talking about the sorts of compactifications that were on symmetric spaces, he was talking about a sort of natural geometric compactification in which the, the metric endow, you know, induces a metric on, on the boundary. So um, at least up to a conformal factor. So this is a situation like that, where you've sort of you've induced a metric on the boundary there. And um, okay, so in that case, if we call this x, this compactified thing x, then it's the image of the, of the cohomology of x rel its boundary. So let me make sure I understand. So you're just put in these coordinates on theta, you're simply taking R less than or equal to some capital. Letter. That's what it comes down to, right? Now, I mean, I'm, I'm going to change coordinates, but you're thinking of it as an interior map. I'm, I'm thinking about this interior map that we've got, right? So, I mean, you can also rewrite this as dx squared over x squared plus d theta squared, where x goes to zero, and that's, you know, like your R equals infinity, and I'm adding a formal copy at zero, right? So the, the metric itself doesn't extend, right? But it does induce this metric on the boundary. Yeah. The top of the, you're, you're just writing the right hand side now, which is topologically, I mean, doesn't matter how you think about it. Right. Right, right. So on the right hand, hand the side, boundary, there's no metric, right? So, so when I say some sort of topologically defined homology, yeah, sure. on the right hand side, I don't want the metric to come into this. Right now, it, there may be other data that needs to come in, but it shouldn't be metric. So, I mean, this is also isomorphic to the reduced L2 cohomology, but for various reasons, the reduced L2 cohomology is not a good cohomology theory. So we want something that has good topological properties. Okay, so, so that's what we get in that case. Um, we could also, instead of giving it a cylindrical metric, you could give it a cusp metric. Right? So this is the sort of metric that you get if you have a finite volume uh, quotient of, of uh, the hyperbolic plane, right? So, right, just like this. Okay, so now once again, we've got this theta, and here the metric looks like dr squared plus e to the minus 2r d theta squared. Right, that's that cusp metric. And in this situation, if we look at the L2 cohomology, this 
turns out to be isomorphic to the cohomology of your original surface, where now you see the natural metric compactification if you add on sort of yeah, what does it make sense to add on? What it makes sense? Put a dot there, but it's actually maybe the first cohomology is the one you're interested in. You know? So the, I mean, you are going to have problems like H zero, for example. Or no, no, it's this is true in all degrees. True in all degrees. Yeah, because it's finite degree. Okay. So the natural metric compactification here, of course, is just adding that dot back in, and that just gives us back our surface, and that's that's what we get. And Finally, um, we can look at a, a G um, KLE metric in a sort of two-dimensional sense, right? Um, which is what the right. So this is where well, okay, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it can be any any volume of cone, but basically you've got the large end of a cone. I should make that curve by the sheet. So now where you stuck the large end of a cone on. So of course this is E R squared plus R squared C T squared. And in this case, if you look at the L2 homology, okay, I'm having the same problem that Laura had, but I remember remembering what I told her, I'm gonna try this, see if it works. For me, any better than it did. So in this case, once again, it, you know, it's maybe not so clear what a metric compactification would be because there isn't anything that gets small, right? But what we're going to do is just add on again, you know, just think of this again as the interior of the manifold of the boundary. Okay, so once again, x. And in this case, this is isomorphic to the following. You don't mean cusp. I don't mean no. cusp, thank you. I mean ALE. Thank you very much. So now, when we look at the zero cohomology, we're going to get, sorry, relative, uh, sorry, the absolute cohomology. Of x, and so we're gonna, no, we're going to get the relative cohomology. Sorry. And in the top degree, we're going to get the absolute cohomology. And in the middle, we're going to get the image of one and the other. Conformally, this one looks the same as the first example. In fact, they're all conformally. Oh, no, isn't one minus a disk? This is one is minus a disk. No. Yeah, the hyperbolic is minus a disk. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, if you've got a surface, then mm -hmm. they're, they're all conformal. Right? <laughs> they're all conformal. Okay. So, and that's an important, uh, that's actually one of the things I was just going to take some mm -hmm. notes yeah. here. Awesome. So, <clears throat> Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Gold star. No, that's good. That's good. He does have a tendency of answering questions that you were about to talk about. He did. He did. Do you do that to you too? He does it all the time. He does it all the time. It's great. No, it's good. He must have been a, a you know your best student, favorite student. That's good. No, no, I was considered the the nightmare student. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would be so excited if any of my students. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so. You say that, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe that's true. <laughs> okay, so these are all conformal. Uh, the equivalent. 